The Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 14. Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs so that when it does occur, you may believe. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. I invite you to close your eyes for just a moment. I invite you to take a breath, and as you do, inhale grace. And exhale peace. Inhale grace. And exhale peace. Inhale grace and exhale peace. And as we continue to breathe in God's grace and exhale peace, this large sanctuary is filled with God's peace. You may open your eyes. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. This is not the world's peace. You know that thin veneer of peace, that fragile peace, that glass-like, sharp edge peace. No. The peace that Jesus offers us is rich, thick, and deep. It is that peace that seems to come out of nowhere and settles deep inside you. That peace that passes all understanding. That peace that makes no sense at all. It is that peace that comes when we're struggling, when we're angry or hurt or confused. God's peace comes, and suddenly everything is calm. It makes no sense at all, but there it is. So when we're struggling, we may feel this strange sense of calm come over us. That is God embracing us, blessing us with God's peace. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Think back to that first evening of Easter. Remember when Jesus appeared to his disciples as they were hiding in fear in the upper room behind locked doors? Remember that? That was just, what, five weeks ago? On day one, Jesus told his disciples, peace be with you. Well, here we are on the sixth Sunday of Easter, and again we hear, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives, and do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Jesus knows us pretty well, doesn't he? Jesus knows that people are largely fearful, right? Sometimes I wake up in the night thinking, 
I heard something. Bill, did you hear that? Of course not. He was asleep. But think for a moment. What are you afraid of? Public speaking? The fear of loss of control? What about climate change? How much will the oceans rise? The Ukrainian-Russian conflict, is this going to spill over to the rest of the world? How about our reluctance to listen to one another and our unwillingness to seek common ground? Is this contributing to the escalating violence and hate in our nation? When I came home from assembly yesterday, I feared that because I'd been around so many people and some in close contact, I would be bringing COVID home to Bill. The fear of losing someone. And during these COVID years, we have lost so many. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You know, that's pretty easy for Jesus to say and pretty hard for us to live into, at least me. Do you ever fear grieving the Holy Spirit? You know how this goes, right? God whispers something in your ear and you say, are you talking to me? And then you just go about your business paying no attention. We say we are God's servants. If so, are we listening for God to tell us what God desires for us to do for him? How many times does Jesus have to tell us, don't be afraid, don't worry, be at peace, before we begin to act like we are believers, right? Now, the timing of this discourse of Jesus his promise of peace is the night of his betrayal, the evening when he will be handed over to those who hate him and will take him away to be executed. And yet in that moment, that very moment, he not only senses peace within himself, but he bestows it on others, on his disciples. Are we like that? On Wednesday, I was preparing to go up to assembly, and I had my van packed, and, and I was ready to go. I had a meeting in Mission Valley uh, from 5 to 6, no problem. Then I'd hit the road, and I'd get to Irvine, uh, about 8. Well, the meeting ended. I went to the bathroom. I proceeded to the elevator, and I pushed the button. Nothing happened. I pushed the up button, thinking, well, maybe it'll come up, and then I can go down, which is a disability trick, by the way, nothing happened. I repeated, I thought, well, maybe I didn't press it hard enough. No, not really. Then I realized there was a problem. Luckily, the woman I was meeting with hadn't left by way of the stairs, which she might have. I said, the elevator seems not to be working. Oh, yes, they turn it off at 6. <laughs> okay. That was a startling comment. She looked through her stack of cards, rapidly looking for the building managers and the emergency number cards. She then went quickly down the stairs, which she was able to do, to see if anyone was still around. No luck. She calls the emergency number. No answer. She calls the manager. No answer. Finally, she calls the fire department. Right? Unfortunately, the person asked if I was in the elevator. No, I was on the landing. Then this is not an emergency. We cannot come. Okay, well, if I go down the steps, is that an emergency? The clock is ticking. It's edging towards 8 o'clock. Meanwhile, I am remarkably calm, sizing up, looking around her office, where I might spend the next eight hours looking around for perhaps a couch or somewhere to sleep. Finally, the elevator people call and say, they'll be right there at 10 o'clock. 
<laughs> but they arrived at 8.30, thankfully. I have to admit, my sense of calm was very strange. It was very strange. Usually I'm my advocate self. What do you mean? Blah, 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 blah. You know, well, but this was not the case. This is the peace that passes understanding. The peace is a gift from God, something we sense most when we give over to God a certain amount of control, right? Of things not that we can't worry about. Not that we surrender responsibility, but rather that we recognize there are limits to what we can affect or achieve on our own. And getting the elevator going was not something I could change. And sensing these limits, we place ourselves, our loved ones, our fortunes, and our future in God's hands. God's response is to give us peace, a peace that allows us to lift our gaze from the troubles that surround us and see those around us as gifts of God, worthy of our love and our attention. God's peace isn't something you can seek or grasp, but you can only receive. Only as re we release our grip that we have so tightly on many things we're trying to hold on to, do we discover with open hands we can receive God's gift of peace. But Jesus gives differently than the world, right? Jesus gives freely, with no expectation of return, only with the hope that transformed by his peace, we might pass it on giving others the gift we have received. In the sure and certain confidence that God loves us and wants to use us for good, I ask you to stand as you're able. May God give you the peace that passes all understanding so that you sense his love so deeply in your life that you feel compelled to pass it on. The peace of Christ be with you. Please greet someone next to you with that abiding peace. Amen.